I'll start out giving you a, a brief history lesson of ZebraChip in Idaho. So, of course, we didn't care about ZebraChip until we found it in the Pacific Northwest, and that uh, occurred in 2011. So we, we've always had silts, as far as we know, uh, in the area, but we didn't have the, the bacterium and the disease, or at least we didn't detect it until 2011. So that was the first year we found it in Idaho, also in Washington and Oregon. Um, it was relatively low incidence, about 1%, and most of it was in the area that we call the Magic Valley. So this is obviously Idaho here. So potatoes are grown in the Snake River Plain here, this Snake River smiley face um, that I talked about last year. And this is the central part is what we call the Magic Valley, uh, which is where I'm located. Um, so that's where most of the ZC was that we found uh, that first year in 2011. So 2012, we started monitoring for potato psyllids. Uh, and I'll show you the, the results of the monitoring program from each of, the, each of these three years that we've been monitoring. Um, again, we had about 1% incidence of ZC. Uh, but some fields were much higher. Uh, so we had like 3 to 15% to or even higher than 15%. A couple of fields were rejected for fresh market. Um, again, a lot of that tended to be in the Magic Valley. Um, in 2013, we decided to expand the monitoring program quite a bit. And then we found almost no zebra chip. We actually found one positive plant that was on our uh, research station. So. Um, Probably there was more out there, but we're scrutinizing our plants a little bit uh, more closely. And then in 2014, we continued this monitoring program. And again, I'll show you the results from, these, uh, from this monitoring program. And the ZC incidence was uh, still uh, very low. I don't, I don't know that we found that, that anybody has found any zebra chip uh, in Idaho this year. So I'll step back and go through uh, the results from the monitoring programs for, for each of these uh, three years. So 2012, it was a relatively modest monitoring program com compared to the following years. We had 14 uh, grower fields and then also a, a field at the Kimberly Research and Extension Center where I'm located in Twin Falls County here. Uh, we were monitoring for uh, adults and nymphs uh, and eggs. In 2013 to 2014, we decided to cover uh, this Snake River Plain smiley face uh, a lot more carefully, so we have a lot more sites. So let me give you some more details here. So 2013 and 2014, we uh, had a similar program to what we did in 2012, and this, this is what I call the intense program, the intense monitoring program, where we had uh, 13 fields uh, each of these uh, two years. Uh, sampled psyllids every week using 10 sticky traps per field arranged around the perimeter of a, of a field. Uh, we also used vacuum samples uh, to look for adults, and we took leaf samples. So we took 10 leaf samples in, each, in the vicinity of each of these 10 sticky traps, so 100 leaves per field, and we looked for nymphs and eggs on those leaves. So that was the intense program, uh, again, 13 fields in 2013 and 2014. Then we also had these, uh, what I call the light uh, sampling fields. Uh, so we had uh, 94 of these fields in 2013 and 75 of these fields uh, in 2014. So again, sampling every week. Uh, this time we were just using four sticky traps per field, and that was the only sampling method that we were using. So we got a lot of help from crop consultants um, helping us to deploy and retrieve these cards, and then they sent them to our lab, and we uh, identified the psyllids. And of course, we would have liked to put more out, but um, four was as much as we could uh, handle. So here are the results from the intense uh, monitoring program for the first year, 2012. Uh, so the y-axis is the, the mean number of psyllids per trap um, averaged among the the different fields, and I split it up, split the results among uh, these three different regions here. So color-coded here, and then um, you can see in this little map in the corner uh, what part of the state uh, those different colors correspond to. So the southwestern Idaho, we call the Treasure Valley, that's in yellow. Uh, South Central, again, is the Magic Valley, that's in purple. And then 
uh, the eastern part of the valley uh, we call the Upper Snake. Uh, the Snake River runs through this valley, so this is the, the upper part of the, the Snake River plain. So you can see a whole lot of purple on that um, slide and, and not much as far as the other colors. So a couple little blips here of, of green and, uh, and yellow. So most psyllids uh, obviously came from the Magic Valley. Um, and this is a pattern that we'll see each year of relatively low numbers of psyllids that gradually increase, um, similar to what um, you guys are seeing in, in Texas and other parts of the country. Um, numbers uh, really increase towards the end of the season. Um, again, almost everything is in the Magic Valley. And that uh, made sense to us because we saw uh, more zebra chip in the Magic Valley in 2011. We tended to see more in the Magic Valley in 2012, um, which is the, obviously the year that uh, these psyllids uh, were trapped. So, but we did, working with, other, working with crop consultants in other parts of the state, especially in this Treasure Valley area, they were doing their own monitoring and, and they were finding psyllids, but we weren't finding psyllids in, uh, in our fields that we were trapping. So we decided we really needed to expand the monitoring program to get a better idea of what's going on. The psyllids could be patchily distributed and maybe we're not catching everything. We don't have uh, cards, we don't have sites set up in the right spot. So if we put more sites out there, we'll be able to get a better idea of what's going on throughout the state. Because we know they're in the Treasure Valley, but we caught hardly any. Um, so this is the uh, next year, 2013, again, we have a lot more um, sites, but I'm just showing the intense fields, which is only, still only 13. I'll show you the, uh, the crop consultant uh, light monitoring sites in a minute. Um, but even just looking at this, we saw a different pattern, obviously. Before, you saw a whole lot of purple on the screen here, seeing a whole lot of yellow on the screen. So most of our psyllids uh, were in the Treasure Valley in 2013. Um, a few in the, in the Magic Valley, they, I mean, they were consistently there, but at low levels throughout the season. Um, if you look at the Treasure Valley, you, you can see that gradual increase in numbers over the season that we, that we typically see. And Upper Snake, I think there's a, there's a blip or two um, towards the end of the season. We caught a couple psyllids uh, in eastern Idaho. So a pretty different uh, situation in 2013 in terms of the distribution. Uh, this is 2014, so this is uh, this year. Uh, a, look, a little bit different. We did see uh, most psyllids in the Treasure Valley once again. Um, we saw psyllids sort of sporadically in the Magic Valley. And one thing that I should have pointed out is take a look at the, the y axis here. Um, it goes up to nine, uh, average of nine. And I had to trim had had to reduce the scale each year because our overall seal of numbers are actually decreasing quite a bit. So 2013 goes up to three. 2014 I really had to zoom in and only goes up to half a psyllid. Um, so our numbers are decreasing each year um, even though the overall patterns may look may look similar. Um, so again 2014 most of their psyllids were, were in the Treasure Valley. Uh, we saw some of the Magic Valley as well and um, I think on the intense sites, um, we didn't find any in the, the upper snake region. So this just shows that those three years, uh, those last three slides I showed you mashed together uh, in one. Again, uh, different scale on the y-axis. Uh, so sort of similar timing of first occurrence, um, this increase in abundance, uh, but some differences in terms of the distribution across the um, growing region. So. These are the, the light sites. So this was started in 2013. We didn't have these in 2012. So this is the, the four sticky traps uh, per field, um, just doing sticky trap monitoring and, and a lot more sites. So we're able to add this, this little region, I call this the, the Elmore County region, um, even though some of them are not quite in Elmore County, but it's sort of this area between Treasure Valley and Magic Valley um, to sort of cover that little gap there. And you can see the, the pattern is still similar where um, most silids were in the Treasure Valley, um, a little bit lower uh, in the Elmore County area, a little bit lower in the Magic Valley, and then hardly anything in the Upper Snake. So there seems to be this um, sort of gradient from west to east in terms of silid abundance. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is 2014. We, um, 
weren't able to get as many sites in that Elmore County area. So some of them are sort of the eastern edge of Treasure Valley or western edge of the Magic Valley. So I sort of just put them um, with either Treasure or Magic Valley uh, where they fit. Um, <clears throat> but again, most similar to the intense um, sites, most solids were in the Treasure Valley and fewer in the Magic Valley. And I think there may be a, a blip or two uh, or maybe one blip, but I think of green there. It's hard to see from my angle, but I think there's some, some green in there. We, we caught a cylinder or two in the upper snake. Uh, but again, numbers lower overall in 2014 compared to 2013. So I showed you a series of, of satellite images last year of um, weekly uh, trapping results for, for 2013. It's, um, so I just wanted to to show, show that end of season summary of, of what I showed you last year for 2013 to give you another idea of the sort of geographical distribution of psyllids across the state. So here each one of these pins represents a, a site where we're monitoring uh, in a potato field. If, it's a, if the pin is yellow, that means we did not find any psyllids throughout the whole season in 2013. If it's blue, it means we found uh, psyllids. We found one or more psyllids, but uh, none of them were hot. And then if it's red, that means we found at least one hot psyllid on that site. So you can see every site in the Treasure Valley had psyllids at one point or another over the season. As you move from west to east, you see uh, you're more likely to find a site that's, that's yellow that did not have any psyllids. And um, there's not so much a, an obvious pattern in, the, in terms of the the hot psyllids found. Um, you can see some red throughout, uh, maybe more in the Treasure Valley and Magic Valley than in this uh, Elmore County area. And this is a summary of just comparing all three of the years um, for several different parameters. So you can see the total number of sites that we had each year, obviously much higher uh, the last two years. Um, this is about how many traps we were handling each week. Uh, the number of weeks that we ran the trapping. Uh, some of the fields went a little bit longer in 2014. This is the total number of psyllids on sticky cards. Uh, that's really telling there. You can see a huge drop in psyllid numbers between 2013 and 2014. Uh, of course, we had a lot fewer cards out in 2012, but we still caught a lot more psyllids compared to 2013. We tested a subset of the psyllids for LSO in 2012, and tested all of them in 2013 and 2014 when we had more money to do, to do that. And the percent positive um, was surprisingly high in 2012. And again, that was the year that we actually found a fair amount of zebra chip in the fields and dropped down to more uh, typical numbers compared to, to other regions. So 2.8, 2.9% for the last couple of years. And I just sort of made an estimate of the number of psyllids per card. Um, again, because a lot fewer sites were looked at in 2012, and it's sort of about a five-fold drop in the number of psyllids per card each year. So um, good for growers, not necessarily so good for uh, drumming up uh, research dollars. So <clears throat> the uh, Snake River Plain in Idaho, it's lower elevation in the western part of the state and gradual increase in elevation as you, as you move from west to east. And it, it appears that psyllid numbers um, seem to be related to that uh, elevation and temperature gradient across the state. So psyllids tend to show up earlier in the western part of the state and they're, um, at least in the last two years, have been higher numbers in the western part of the state and a little bit lower as you, as you move to the east. So that seems to make sense in terms of the uh, temperature regimes and temperature gradient across the state. And it supports overwintering observations, which I've not talked about here today, but uh, psyllids seem to be a lot easier to find in overwintering sites in the western part of the state. And we can find them in the Magic Valley, but uh, they don't seem to be nearly uh, as abundant or as easy to find. Uh, as they are as you move west or, or like in the Columbia Basin in, in Washington and Oregon. So we see this gradual in, increase in captures over the season, similar to what, to what other, others have seen in other regions, including the Columbia Basin. Again, our psyllid numbers were a lot higher in 2012, 
lower in 2013 and lower still in 2014. And our LSO incidence was quite high in 2012, which um, makes sense in terms of the amount of zebra chip that we saw in the fields. And we had sort of more typical LSO incidents in 2013 and 2014, and really no zebra chip to speak of, uh, except for on our uh, research and extension center in Kimberley. So ZC was pretty difficult to find the last, last two years. So I want to thank a whole slew of people uh, who uh, help out with uh, deploying and retrieving sticky cards and identifying SILIDs, testing our SILIDs for LSO. And of course, all the, the funding that we received to support this research. And lastly, I just wanted to um, sort of as an homage to Jim Croslin, who would always end his talks <laughs> with him on top of some mountain. Uh, this is me on the summit of uh, Mount Bora, the highest peak in Idaho, um, in September. And I'm holding Spuddy Buddy here, who is the, the mascot of the Idaho Potato Commission. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs>